Hi everybody, John Wright from Wilcom. I'd like to make a video to show you how to set up this magic little Wi-Fi connect device that Wilcom have designed and produced. This will allow you to send wirelessly uh, embroidery designs from your PC directly to your embroidery machines. So the first thing you need to do is to attach it to your PC via the USB cable that's provided and you'll notice that the power light at the top will begin flashing green. It's simply to say that it's been connected to power and the system recognizes it. The next thing we'll be looking for and <laughs> the next thing we'll be looking for is the Wi-Fi light to uh, flash and finally go solid blue. That's indicating that it's looking for a, um, a for, for a Wi-Fi network uh, while it's flashing and when it turns solid it means that it's found it and then we'll we'll have to set the device up. So while that's happening, let's have a look at some of the other things that we need to run the software. Uh, you'll need a computer with a 64-bit operating system. That is to run the latest Embroidery Studio uh, software. Uh, an embroidery machine with a USB port, of course. The latest Wilcom Embroidery Studio software, and at this time that's 4.5G, which was released uh, a few days ago. Of course, you'll need the Hub software, which is included free with the and will install with Embroidery Studio. A wireless network, and if you're installing your device now, have your password for that network ready, uh, because we'll need that in a few moments. And of course, the magic little um, Embroidery Connect device. Okay, so I'll just start the, the Hub software, that's the splash screen. When you install the software, uh, the, the two icons, shortcut icons, should appear on your desktop. Uh, if they don't, go to your Start menu and All Programs. Scroll down to the W's. Find the Embroidery, Wilcom Embroidery Studio 4.5 folder, and you'll see both icons for the, the, the two different pieces of software there, the Embroidery Hub and Embroidery Studio 4.5. Okay, you can see I have already added them to my start menu and they're on my desktop. So Embroidery Hub is opening now. I'll open up Embroidery Studio and you can see under my help menu I've got 4.5G installed. Okay, so I'll just minimize that for the moment. And this is our Embroidery Hub. Now this is simply a piece of software that's going to manage lots of things in the Wilcom family eventually, but at, at the moment it's managing this device. So you can see that the Wi-Fi light is flashing blue, so it's still searching for the network. But it's time now for us to add a new Embroidery Connect device. So click on the button. And once the device has discovered the networks that are available here. It'll, it'll display them. This is my network, so I'll select it. Go next. And what I need to do now is to add the password in to join the network. network. So just give me a moment to do that. And if I've got that password correct, the device will connect to the network and what we need to do now is to set the device up. So each of these devices will be attached to a separate embroidery machine. So what we want to do is name this to, to match the machine. So I'll just call it machine one. And we have to tell the device, or the software at least, what file type we want to send to the machine. So I'm going to set up a uh, a Tajima machine now, so we'll select DST file. Uh, do you want to rotate the design as it's sent to the machine? So that's completely up to you. Now, DST files can be written and read from the root folder in any USB or storage device, so I'll leave that as it is. And we've got a Tajima machine. It would be similar settings for Happy and uh, SWF. Okay, so what machine model? I'm not too sure. I think they do a T E M X. I, I can't be certain, but read that off your machine and just fill it in there. That's just an identifier. 
and how many heads on the machine. So we'll simulate a four head machine and finish. Okay, so our icon for the machine has appeared in the list and if you had several of these you'd see several uh, icons in the work area here. So we're still trying to log on to the network. As soon as that happens, the light will be solid blue. We'll get a green bar across the bottom here and we'll get a tick or a green check, a go-ahead check at the bottom of the icon in our hub, Embroidery Hub Manager. So you can see all three things have happened now. Okay, so what we need to do now is to double click on the icon for the device and you can see these are the settings that we've just finished putting in there. I'm going to go to the Manage Designs uh, menu here and what this is doing is taking us into the storage area of the device and you can see we've got nothing stored there at the moment. Now normally what you do at this stage is to unplug this from the PC and take it over and plug it into your embroidery machine. You'll then have to wait a couple of minutes till it reconnects with the network. There's no battery in this. All its power is derived from either the PC or the embroidery machine. So once it's plugged in again, it's going to have to search and reconnect to the network. Now you don't have to do anything, just wait because we've just inserted the password there. So just wait till you get the, the solid green connect, the solid blue Wi-Fi network light and the solid green bar across the bottom of the device and we can then send files to it across the uh, across the network so let's do that just now we go okay so to do that we need to go into our embroidery studio software and you'll see in your standard toolbar there are two new icons the paper uh, plane and the four black arrowheads so the paper plane will send the design directly to whichever device you select in the next screen. So send it across and if you had a number of machines they'd be listed in the column here. We only have the one so we're going to send that design across and we'll get a green bar and it's all go. And we just go OK. Let's send another design across so we'll pick the shell and we'll send it across as well. Okay, so now the design is at the machine and the operator would see the green light and uh, can read the design in from the device as if it were from any other USB device. So she go to the control panel and uh, call the device in, call the design in at least. So let's go into our hub manager and just have a look and see what's in its memory. Now we're looking at it across the uh, across the Wi-Fi network now. So manage designs, and there we sent a DST, an image file, and a DST file. So the shell must have had an image, a DGT file attached to it, and it's come with it as well. But you can see we've got the the two uh, DST files ready to be read by the embroidery machine. Now I'm going to delete those because I, I want to move on and uh, show you how to connect a Baradon machine. <coughs> so I'll close that. <coughs> Excuse me. I'll just close this down and I'll come back in and we'll change these settings. Now Baradon uh, machines can read a number of different files, UO3, U files and even DST and DSB files but they need to be saved into a folder they can't be saved to the root folder of the storage device so we're going to use the U file type now and if the U file types that you're sending across it needs to go into a folder called something .fdr we've nominated designs .fdr .fdr you may be used to Baradon .fdr but the important bit is that it should be .fdr We've defaulted to designs.fdr. I'll change this to a Baradon machine. Oh, I keep forgetting that caps lock. 
Baradin and look let's just say it's a BEMX you check I'm not sure uh, still a forehead machine and we'll apply and OK that now we'll go through the same procedure uh, remember we deleted the files from the storage area in the device a moment ago but let's send a different design let's send the coffee design and to that machine yep okay and we'll get a green bar and it's good to go yes and I don't think we've sent this one across so we'll do the same with that so we've got two different designs heading to the Barada machine now <clears throat> okay so at the machine the operator would see that the bar is green they would know that they can uh, download a file from the device so let us go back into the device double click it and manage and we should see a designs.fdr folder the other thing the operator at the machine will notice that the bar has gone yellow here Bec and that's because we're in the manage designs mode so we're managing designs in the folder and access to that folder has been locked to the machine operator I mean you don't want them trying to download when you're halfway through loading or deleting files so that's just a message to the operator that they can't uh, download a file from the device as soon as I close that it turns green again so we'll come back in here because I didn't actually show you the files come back in that's the folder double click that and there are the two files that we sent to the folder that was created uh, actually I'll go back in and I'll delete those as well <clears throat> I'll delete both those files because now I'm going to show you what the queue is and the idea of the queue the idea of the design queue, which is empty at the moment, is that you can plug in a, a barcode scanner, one of these things, into the bottom of the USB Wi-Fi connect device. Okay, it's connected, it's got power to it, and it's ready to go. To go. So how this works is, instead of using the paper plane, I'm going to send the design to a queue. So it's just sitting on your PC at the moment. I'll send off the copy, coffee as well. Okay, so let's go back to the device. And in our, in our design queue, so it hasn't gone to the device yet, but we're, in the, we're only in the hub uh, management software. There are two designs in the queue. So the idea is that the operators will have received a plot sheet with a barcode on it you simply scan the barcode and the design will come from the will come from the queue to the particular machine that this is attached to so there's a safe the problem there could be if two operators uh, grab the same design <clears throat> to prevent that check this box so only one operator can receive the design. If, if you had three, two or three machines running, the one design will uncheck that so they can all receive the design. But once it's, once it's received, if this is checked, it will be deleted from the queue. Now, here's another interesting thing. These are still EMB files. Remember when we set the device up, we told the software what file type we wanted. So as soon as we scan and drag from the queue, it will change it to the file type related to the device that the scanner is attached to. Magic device. It's going to save you lots of time and lots of errors, I can imagine, too. If the operator's got the, the, um, the plot sheet, they don't have to search for file and, and confused about where the files are located. 
it's quite black and white so to speak it's just scan the scan the barcode of the design and there it is at their machine so i hope this has helped i'll see if i can get a, a document to attach to the article that i'll include this video in as well so thanks for watching and um, enjoy your embroidery connect device